All right. Rutgers is not in the field, Brad. Yeah, that's um, it's interesting. I can't say I'm shocked, though. Basically, what the committee did, they judged Rutgers by how they played without Mo- without Mawat Mag. And the reality is they were not the same team. Um, they didn't have any significant victories without him in the lineup. Yes, they played better in the Big Ten tournament. Um, they seemed to be competitive. But that's not all that the committee was looking at. The committee was also looking at different items on their resume, like Number one, I'll start with, is Rutgers' strength of schedule, which is over 300, would have been the worst in the field. That's a problem. A team like Clemson got left out with a strength of schedule of over 300. That's something that Rutgers can control. Uh, So improving their non-conference strength of schedule is something that they need to look at moving forward. Their road neutral record of being five and nine was not particularly great. They had four quadrant three losses. No other team in the field had that. Um, and, and they had a strength of record of 57, which would have been the worst of any team in the field. So there's a lot of factors that went into Rutgers not getting in. They did win at Purdue early in the season. But unfortunately, the committee judged Rutgers by their current roster. And the current roster showed that they're not an NCAA tournament team. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, guys, I'm just going to call it like I see it here and you can tell me I'm wrong because you're the experts. I think the East region is the most wide open region. I'm not in love with Purdue. I think they're the weakest one seed Marquette's playing great ball. I don't mean to write them off, but, um, two teams jump out at me here, guys, Duke on the five line, Kentucky on the six line. I kind of feel like the door's wide open for one of those two blue bloods to actually run through this. Rocco, am I wrong for uh, feeling that this is the weakest region? Yeah, I don't know, because I think I I can't get away from the 8-9 game and those being two tremendous teams um, who I could see uh, both of them beating Purdue uh, for sure. And, you know, uh, for the Owls' sake, it's been such a great year. I'd love to see it be them. But Memphis is old as heck and – they have the confidence coming off of a Houston win now to blitz through the first weekend of the NCAAs as well. Um, I think, you know, Duke and Oral Roberts is a heck of a matchup. Um, Duke's got the 24th best adjusted defense. They've played a lot better defense down the stretch. Their defense will be supremely tested against Max Haysmith. Uh, but if Duke can get by that, you know, obviously they're in uh, a great position to get to the Sweet 16 and beyond. Uh, so we'll see. And then uh, Kentucky, you know, probably out of all those, Kentucky's got the best draw. Just because, like you said, uh, the two they got the weakest two of Marquette, even though Marquette's been a team that everybody took for granted all year, and they love that chip on the shoulder. I think Marquette would love to play Kentucky. But, uh, but yeah, I think just in comparison to the other twos and all that, um, Kentucky's got a great draw. Okay. I, uh, I'm just imagining a world where Shaka Smart and the chip on that team's shoulder has to go through Michigan State, Kentucky, and Duke just to get to the final four. I mean, that would be a a pretty insane path if that happened. Um, Certainly some of those teams aren't, you know, typical on uh, at their best version of themselves, but uh, man, for a a team that is playing great basketball, that would be very interesting to watch. All right. I'm going to run through the the higher seeded teams again in this region, just like we've done. You've talked about a couple of them here, Uh, but Oral Roberts on the 12 line, they play Duke, Louisiana's a 13. They play Tennessee. We've got Providence, the 11 playing Kentucky, USC, the 10 playing Michigan state, Montana state, the 14 playing Kansas state. Which one of those five do you pick and why is it Oral Roberts? (laughs) Yeah, Uh, you you know what? Duke has been playing so much better over the course of the last few weeks. Um, But yeah, that's the pick. It has to be the pick, right? It has to be the pick. I mean, probably going to take Oral Roberts against no matter who they played. Um, But yeah, that's that's got upset special written all over it. Rocco? Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to all the way pick it, but I really, I really think there's a couple of stories to be told about the Montana state Bobcats at the 14 line, um, a team I know very well. Um, they've got three, three guys that will play professionally for sure. Uh, battle and Bellow are very, very special battle might even get a cup of t- coffee in the, in the NBA an elite shooter. Um, you know, they played like crap last year in the tournament. They played Texas tech and Texas tech put that defense on them and they got destroyed lost by 40 plus, 
I know they're going to be much hungrier this year to have a better showing. And Kansas State, you know, um, they've had a special year, uh, but they have some games where you did, they do look pretty beatable. And I, I just, I just think Montana State's going to be up for the fight um, in that matchup, and it'd be a, a pretty, uh, pretty. If any three fourteen is going to happen, I could see that one happening. All right, let's go broad look. Now we have the entire field revealed. What's the biggest surprise, whether it's a team that got in you didn't expect or a team that is out that you didn't expect? What is the most surprising thing about this full reveal? Hey, guys, just a reminder, our sponsor for today's episode is Run Your Pool. They are hosting the Field of 68 Bracket Challenge. This year, they are giving away $1,500 in free prizes. It's all an incentive for you to get on there and find out just how good their platform is. I've been using them for my bracket pools for years. I've used them for Super Bowl squares. I use them for everything that I need to use them for. The biggest survivor pool that I'm in for both NFL and NCAA tournament is by Run Your Pool. So go check them out. The link's below. Tap in. I'd say for... For for me, it's it's Rutgers. That's that's my biggest surprise. Uh, I, I can't say I'm shocked because I knew there was always the possibility that they would get left out. Um, but you know, we we went through all the reasons why. Um, I think the committee, for the most part, did it did a good job there. I think there were I thought Texas A and M was underseeded by a couple seeds, um, especially the way that they've been playing lately. I know they had two quadrant four losses, but you know, at, at some point you need to realize like hey this team is this team's on fire it's playing well um and i thought they should have been a better seed um and it's also interesting to, to see vanderbilt not make the field because they won 10 of their last 11 games and they had seven wins over the field um and it just goes to show you that what the committee says how you play in the last 10 12 games it doesn't matter it's your total body of work rocco yeah for me it's um you know just because we're so fresh off of this, it's still the Florida Atlantic and uh, Memphis situation. You know, I think I had Florida Atlantic on the seven line, uh, very easy to see them on the eight, um, them dropping to a nine, you know, even with that amazing uh, championship result, blowing out UAB and getting up to 13 in the net, the NCAA's own tool, the net um, didn't matter. Uh, they kept them as a nine. There was, there was no conference USA representation on the committee. There was also no American conference representation on the committee. And I feel like if we had one or the other, they would have probably made sure to, to either a get those seeds a little bit better or, or not have that matchup at least, you know, I thought, I thought both those teams were top 32 teams, which means top eights, which means there should be no way they play each other. Um, and I also just think, you know, in general, this probably meant Michigan state went up to a seven to prevent a big ten, a big 10 team from having to play Purdue in the second round. And if that was the case um, it's easy to justify for them, but I thought Michigan state was clearly below Florida Atlantic after losing by 10 to the Buckeyes in their final impression. Um, they didn't see it that way. And, and to me, that's just a little surprising uh, because you know, the, the amount of work a team like Florida Atlantic's put in to win all these games in, in the, the toughest conference USA in over a decade um, and to be treated this way in a nine seat against a very high level uh, Memphis team with NBA level players um, is just simply wrong. And it's funny, Rocco, because I remember discussing this with you the other day. I'm like, what would be a bad matchup for a team like FAU, who I know you you love? And the team you said <laughs> was Memphis. Exactly. I mean, no, I talked to coaches about it in the eight nine range at, at Big Ten schools and otherwhere otherwise, and they all say the same thing. This is not my own opinion this is from like actual staffs nobody wants to play memphis and you know i want to see florida atlantic play a big school i think we all do and memphis is a big school they're just not in a big conference yet they probably will be in the future but yeah uh that's just tough it really is memphis a team i don't think anybody wants to play right now as you guys alluded to i'm also still kind of laughing that the big ten's mediocrity led to a positive result for Michigan state here. So many teams that are just on that eight, nine line. Eh, somebody's got to bump up. It has to happen. Here you go. Spartans. I really do like the draw for Michigan state here, even though they could run into Marquette potentially. Um, all right. We've got a minute left. So rapid fire time. Give me the, the strongest and weakest region. We'll go to Rocco first and then we'll go to Brad quickly. Oh man. Um, put me on the spot. I, I should probably get a bracket pulled up, but uh <laughs> Or just make quick. something up, Rocco. We got 10 seconds. You're on the clock. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, like, 
my bracket's pretty close to the real bracket, which is a great sign for my score and all that stuff. But I would just say the one with Houston in it because I know um, they stacked the deck with uh, Texas as the two. And and here I do have a copy of the bracket now. And as you take a look at it, um, you know, Drake's a very strong 12 up there next to Houston. You also have Indiana and Kent State, which will be a fabulous 413 matchup, um, all the way down to Auburn playing in Birmingham against Houston. Even though Houston's the better team, Auburn might be playing a home game there. And then you look down on the second half of the of the Midwest, you know, Texas is the best of the twos. And then you also have, you know, Xavier might be the weakest of the threes, but I think in general, that's the one I go with because A&M at seven is is definitely the strongest seven. Okay. Brad, strongest, weakest? I, I like the the West um, to be the strongest. With, with Kansas, UCLA, Gonzaga, and UConn, I thought UConn was a team that, that could have been a three seed. Um, that's that's going to be a heck of a region. Um, and, you know, don't discount UCLA. They have injuries, but I, I'm never going to bet against Mick Cronin, that's for sure. Uh, we have the official last team in the field was Nevada. The first team out was not Rutgers. It was Oklahoma State, guys. Very Rutgers was, this, was the second team out. 